a pleasant and warm welcome to all my students in last class we learnt about causes for the rise of jainism and buddhism and jainism religion we learnt and in today's class we shall learn about buddhism in which early life of buddha enlightenment of buddha four noble truth of him followers of the new religion branches of buddhism and foreign invasions in 6th bce today we'll be learning now let's see the birth of buddha buddha was born in 563 bc as siddhartha was a prince of kapilavastu in nepal buddha's father was shuddhodana was the king of sakyas buddha's mother was named maya devi maya died 7 days after her son's birth the child was brought up by maya's sister mahaprajapati who became his foster mother the name siddhartha means wish fulfilled or one has accomplished his goal and in his early age it was predicted that Siddhartha would give up all the worldly pleasures and follow a simple life. Shuddhodana apprehended that his son may become a recluse and turn away from the world if he was left to himself. Siddhartha was married off at the age of 16. His wife's name was Yashodara and he had a son named Rahul. One day he ventured out of the palace and saw suffering pain and death for the first time he felt that one day he would also become a prey to old age disease and death this experience changed his life he realized that worldly happiness was transitory means it's not permanent it is temporary one day at midnight siddhartha left the palace giving up his wife and young son rahul you can see in this picture children four great sights which was witnessed by siddhartha so which made him to go for renunciation so he is saying in the first picture an ascetic and old man in the second picture and a dead person in the third and a sick person in the fourth so these four great sights made him to renunciate the princely life buddha spent many years in the company of saints and finally one day when he was sitting under the bodhi tree in bodhgaya that is in bihar of india he was blessed with the divine light this was a turning point as he realized that the truth is within every human being the search outside was pointless after this siddhartha was known all over the world as buddha which means the enlightened one he was also known by the name of sakyamuni which meant an ascetic of the sakya tribe this awakening was achieved during a night of meditation which passed through various stages as the illumination that gautama had sought slowly welled up in his heart now let's see about dharma chakra pravartana or first sermon of gautama buddha after becoming buddha the enlightened one he went to saranath near banaras there in the deer park he gave his first sermon this has been called dharma chakra pravartana here he preached the four noble truths to the people the four noble truth are siddhartha's philosophy of the nature of human suffering and its relation to desire is articulated by these following four statements so according to gautama buddha the four noble truths are life is full of pain and suffering which means the whole world is full of sorrow and suffering and human desire causes this suffering so why this pain and suffering are occurring 
because of the human desire by putting an end to desire humans can end suffering which means only by the liberation of excessive desires could a peaceful life be led and fourth humans can end the desires by following eight fold path or ashtanga marga so these are the four noble truths which was preached by gautama buddha now let's see about the eight fold path the eight fold paths are right view right thought right speech right action right livelihood right effort right recollection right resolve buddha preached the eight fold path for eliminating desires this is called the middle path the right view so the people have to view the life and death in the sense death is not the end our actions and beliefs have consequences after death so during our life we have to lead a peaceful life with good actions and good belief and next is about right thought here gautama buddha says that abandoning the negative thoughts we should always should have a positive thinking in our life and next right speech so we should not tell lies or our talk should not be rude or harsh and it should not bring hatred enmity and disunity and the next one is right action the right action of a person should promote moral honorable and peaceful conduct a person should uh, should be away from stealing killing and hurting others and next right livelihood the pro- profession what we undertake the profession should be blameless and honorable and the next is right effort the right effort is the practice to cultivate our mindfulness in the middle way which means neither to lax or not to effortful and next one is right recollection which means good remembrance and meditation and the last is right resolve which means giving up hope and to stay away from cruelty so right resolve or right intention so the people have to stay away from cruelty so these are the eight fold path or the middle path which was taught by gautama buddha next we we'll, we shall learn about followers of the new religion so the followers of the new religion were wealthy merchants artisans and common people so they were all inspired by the teachings of gautama buddha and buddha has given his messages in prakrit the language of of the common man and which was related to them in various aspects of their tradition and in the atmosphere of new cities changed the lives ways of life of the people because of the teachings of buddha the new religions became a ray of hope in changed circumstances and buddhism took a new role of transforming the lives of people in these cities and buddha and followers visited kosala magadha and many cities on the gangetic plains and spread his messages there they walked from one city to another and devoted their lives for others now let's see about mahapari nirvana of gautama buddha buddha in his 80th year his glorious life of selfless service came to an end at kushinagar and this has been called mahapari nirvana 
and the viharas were constructed in all areas in which buddha wandered people preserved his relics and bones in chaityalayas and stupas and in memory of his accomplishments started worshiping him this was how the first temples idols and idol worship began and later not only in india the buddhism started spreading even in foreign countries buddhism spread not only in india but also in foreign countries so by means of chinese travelers like fahian has described vividly about the glory of buddha buddhism has spread to malaya burma thailand cambodia sri lanka and even in bombian in 1956 inspired by buddha's teaching india's prominent social philosopher and architect of the constitution baba saheb dr b r ambedkar embraced buddhism now let's learn about buddhist text after buddha's death his followers collected his teachings and tradition in the form of tripitakas the word tripitaka means basket they are vinaya dhamma and abhidhamma pitakas over a period of time this agreements developed in the teachings and different branches of buddhism sprang up thus hinayana mahayana vajrayana and the sutras came into being today we can see many organization across the globe adopting different ways of realizing buddha children now will learn about foreign invasions during 6th century bc during this period there sprang up city states in greece ancient persia had grown into a powerful empire these two areas engaged in continual conflicts the achaemenians were one group who ruled persia in 6th century bce king darius of this dynasty established a strong empire his kingdom extended up to the indian border during his time in 4th century bce the macedonian king alexander won over the greek city states and captured persia thus even the part of the persian kingdom came under the control of alexander after overpowering persia alexander entered india through the passes in kandahar and hindukush he advanced till ravi bings rivers and unable to proceed further he crossed the border through river jhelum and on his way back home he died at babylonia children now let's see the interesting facts and the battle between alexander and paurava the king paurava was also called porus alexander's army attacked paurava who had never expected anyone to cross the river jhelum which was flooding and wild at the time alexander asked the captured paurava how he desired to be treated as alexander admired a lot about porus there was an interesting conversation between alexander and porus alexander asked what do you want me to do to you porus replied treat me as a king alexander was impressed by this answer paurava's brave adventures have been immortalized in greek writings alexander's attack led to the consolidation of small and big republics and the establishment of the mauryan dynasty in india the arrival of greeks influenced a lot in india for example in the north indian art and science the arrival of greeks have influenced a lot so one of the finest example is the famous art form gandhara art 
which was the influence of the Greeks. Children, in today's class, we have learnt about birth of Siddhartha and his renunciation, enlightenment, his four noble truths, eightfold path or middle path, and the followers of the new religion, spread of Buddhism in India as well as in foreign countries, and three branches of Buddhism, foreign invasions and the battle between Alexander and Paurava. Children, learn from the video class as well as from your textbook. Write neatly in the workbook and do your homework properly. And tomorrow I'll be conducting Zoom class. The timings will be informed in the group. And on November 3rd, I'll be conducting the class test in this lesson. Now, let's move on to home assignment and workbook assignment. Home assignment. First question is, what is Dharma Chakra Pravartana? Second one, what is middle path? Explain. So here, children, you have to write what is called middle path. So middle path is nothing but eightfold paths. So you have to explain about eightfold paths. So about each write, you can write at least a sentence. Only one sentence is enough for each write. Okay. And the third question is, where did Buddha attain Mahapari Nirvana. Fourth question. Mention the three branches of Buddhism. Fifth one. Why did Alexander inspire about Porus? Now let's see about the workbook assignment. Children in page number 33. First main fill in the blanks. Question number 5 to 7. You have to write. And in page number 33 and 34, second main, answer the following. Question number 4, 5, 6. And in page number 35, choose the best alternative. Question number 6 and 7. In page number 35, second main, fill in the blanks. Question number 3 to 5. In page number 36, answer the following briefly. Question number 4, 5 and 6. So, after completing all these things, this lesson is completed in your workbook. So the next day, by Friday, you have to post your workbook pics to my number. Is it clear, children? Home assignment as well as workbook pictures, you have to post to my personal number. As I informed you, tomorrow, that is on Friday, you will be having a Zoom class in social science class. I will let you know about the timings later. Okay. Thank you children.